Black Friday sales in full effect. If you want your brand, your business, or your song promoted, hit me up right now to find out how you can get it done for just $49. The email is O-G-O-D at hiphopun.com. That's O-God at hiphopun.com. Dude, first thing I don't want do. to see him t torn down, though, man. That's a fact. You Let's know. talk about C-Murder, man. That, that was crazy what you told on me earlier. Yeah, man. So a federal judge, a federal judge upheld C-Murder's murder conviction despite two key witnesses recanting their statement. Um, the ruling came in by U.S. District Judge Sheriff Vance. She denied his habeas petition by his attorneys. Um, they sought on a few different occasions to get this uh, ruling overturned. Now it's not looking good for him, man. He's going to have to remain in there. Uh, I don't know if he can do it again or if he has another shot at it, but this is definitely the worst possible scenario. Um, we had people reaching out to us personally on yeah. a few different occasions, yeah. talking about the conditions. He has done hunger strikes. We interviewed Master P talking about this. and um, We interviewed his rep, remember that? Oh, yeah, the rep. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. The rep, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's come down to this. Not the news he wanted, man. What's your thoughts, man? We've been covering this thing for like four or five years now. Damn, man. That's another thing I don't want to wish on another brother because when you look at the evidence, when you look at that case, it definitely looks like those people down in New Orleans set that man up. It's like, there's no question about it. Right. But in doing that, they made sure they stamped that he'll never get out. And my initial reaction when you told me this is, that brother's going to die in jail. Damn. I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I hope on everything I love, I'm wrong. I look forward to one day being able to get behind his microphone and say, I'm wrong. She murders home. You know right. what I mean? Um, not, not, not Percy. What's my man's name? Not Percy Miller. God damn, that's, that's Master P's name. Oh. Corey Miller. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Corey Miller's home. Because I think even C Murder, that annotation, the name, that's like we see, cool. it man. just, it puts a stigma on it, right? So yeah. hopefully one day we could say Corey Miller's home. But, um, that they 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 put him in there for a reason. They wanted him in there, and now it looks like the judge and everybody else is just as corrupt as everybody else, and they're gonna keep him in there. That's Wait, sad. they say New Orleans is one of the um, most corrupt court systems, if not the most corrupt court system in America. Mm. And we got a lot of people that watch us from everywhere. We probably yeah. people that work in the courts, cops, and all that shit that watches. They do. Shout out to y'all, but <laughs> y'all some corrupt mofos down there in New Orleans, man. Let that man go. But nah, man, I, I don't know. I thought at one time he had Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. And what happened to that? Like, is that just, I mean, dead now? I mean, it looked good at the time. Right. Nice publicity stunt. Yeah, it looked good at the time. But um, yeah, it's like 90 something, six pages out. I'm not going to, definitely not going to go through all that. Um, explain, I guess, why they don't want to do it. But um, I, I feel like you feel, I feel like they, they really got it out for this man. Like, mm. it's a situation where, like, nah, we're not letting you out. I don't care how much time you complain, how many times you beg. We ain't letting you out of this thing. Even you got two witnesses that recant it. At yeah. least get this man a new trial. Right. We ain't saying, okay, just let him out, but give him a new trial, a new chance to fight it because they know, in my opinion, he'll probably win. Yeah. It's so old. You know, people have recanted their statements at this point. It's an injustice, man. But, I mean, I think some people believe that this system because it's supposed to be blind, the system. You know, they got the lady up there with the blindfold. But I think in certain instances, the system does work how it's supposed to work. Like, you, in certain, you know, um, areas, you could probably get a fair trial. You could probably, you know, you have your chance to, you know, submit your evidence and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's like it's too much corruption, to think that everywhere you're going to get it. Because, like I said, it's supposed to be a blind system of justice. So that means right. I mean, everywhere in the United States, no matter what state you're in, right. you should be able to get, you know, that presumption. But you don't. And, um, you know, people talk about the Jim Crow South and things like that. Shit, the North is just as bad. Yep. These Commonwealth states are just as bad as when it comes to, you know, fighting in court. So um, we still got a long way to go. I know it's not perfect, a perfect system. But um, I just think that they should definitely get this man another chance to at least go to trial and fight it. That's all. Could we potentially see one day in the future a president potentially pardon him if the mm. if, if it gets loud enough, kind of like Trump did to a few people? Right. Could that be, that, that obviously could be in play, but what do you think about that scenario? I mean, that'd be dope. I don't, I mean, I don't, for what it's looking like, it's probably going to be Trump again, but still early. Mm. Um, he did pardon a lot of people. Yeah. So, 
Didn't he part Desiree Perez too? I think. I think Trump did. I think so. But yeah, Kodak. I know he did Angela Stan King, which we gotta we gotta talk to her too. Yeah, yeah. What happened to that joint? But we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll um, get to her. yeah. But yeah, that that's um. I thought she's so going so hard for Trump. I just realized that. Yeah. I seen a video of her on TikTok the other day yep. talking about Trump. But nah, man. Um, I wish the best. Um, for Corey, because yeah, like you said, true. that C murder thing is crazy. Uh, yeah. And um. He got the best people fighting for him. I mean, your brother, Master P, even though people talk what they say about stuff, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. issues they had. Um, right. You got a, a rich dude behind you, you know, celebrities and stuff. So it, it could be a little worse in that regard. But um, I really thought he would get a chance. Like covering yeah. this, like we did over the last year, the hunger strike. Yeah. I thought that he had a fighting chance. Now right. it looks like it, it's over. It's over, bro. And yeah. I, hopefully we're wrong and hopefully we can talk about Corey Miller being home, but. This ain't good news. So prayers out to him and his family. Man. For sure. What else we got? Uh, you got anything else over there? I don't got anything else. But you know what? I did see something interesting I want to talk about okay. real quick. And that was from Big Gip. Now, we know that um, Andre 3000 put out his flute album last week. And a lot of people were laughing about it, clowning it, saying that, you know, we ain't wait this long for three stacks to come out with no damn flute album, right? And I agree with a lot of that. But oh. at the same time, this is what he wanted to do. This is what he wanted to do. But... Last week, rappers Andre 3000 outsold his flute album. He uh -huh. sold 24,000. He also Nas, Logic, Lil TJ, STG, Ice Spice, Wayne, Kodak Black, Macklemore, Ray Sermon, Westside, Gunner, French Montana, Real Boston, Richie, Yo Gotti, and DJ Drama. Outselling mainstream rappers with an ambient flute album is such an Andre 3000 thing to do. That's the caption. What's your thoughts on that, man? Now, obviously, these aren't first week numbers for a lot of these artists. Um, it, I, I wouldn't assume shit. If it is, that'd be crazy. Right. But what do you think about that? Andre Three Stacks, because of with a flute album, outselling a lot of these mainstream rappers and they their albums. I think it, I, first and foremost, I don't think that sales really matter like they used to mm -hmm. back in the day. I think it's a little bit different. But in this case, in this instance, I think it speaks volumes. You know that people were waiting. And being able to space your music out so much like you did, I think people now are waiting. They really wanted to consume that. That's all. And I'm sure they're probably not disappointed, you know, by that album. Um, again, we come from that era, kind of, where people didn't drop as much. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was better because it's like, all right, Jay drop, DMX a drop, you know, whoever. Nas, they will all drop within a certain period. But you might not get nothing for another year and a half mm -hmm. from all of them. So you got a chance to enjoy all of that body of work. Now it's like 30 people drop per week with 30 different songs. And the next week it's another 30, and another 30, and another 30. And it's like you just can't really consume the music. You have to listen to music all day yeah. long yeah. to really like keep up with all the artists coming out right now. But I'm happy. I'm excited. Uh, I really want to kind of get back to the old hip-hop. You know, it ain't got to be the same sound, but the same essence and the same... You know, um, the wordplay, how it actually meant something. You know, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to the hip hop where you had a six disc CD changer in your car and you Word. threw in those albums. And although yeah. it was probably 30 songs, those were the 30 songs you rolled with and you had. Word. And it wasn't no phone and it wasn't no nothing all stupid. You had these songs. That's it. And you rocked to them. So you can listen to your Jay-Z and your Nas and your DMX and your Mob Deep or your I Had Tank or Chris Brown. And yeah. Usher and get you a nice little mixture and just ride to the joint. And when you turn the car off and turn that motherfucker back on, you get right back to work. And listen to the whole joint, and too. listen to the whole joint. Right. And then when that album's over, the next one kick over. And you can appreciate and learn and love and really put yourself in a time where you enjoyed that music. Those times are dead. It's been dead since about 08 for me. <laughs> me. Yeah, you're probably right. And that, <laughs> man, and that, and, and we, I talk about even love isn't the same as an adult. And maybe, I don't know, it, that, that all goes hand in hand because when I loved the most and had my most fuzz loving in high school, I got music to just go right with that soundtrack Word. of love. Got Word. it. Word. You know what I'm saying? I can go back to it immediately. Remember the girl, remember the smell, remember the time, remember all that. Yeah. And I miss that type of stuff because I feel like human, those type of human connections keep us close to who we really are as self. And we, the further we stray away from that, the further we stray away from who we are for real. So That's real talk you know as mean? far as like even like humanity and loving people. Like those songs that you were able to kind of, even you was thinking about that chick. Mm -hmm. like you put that joint on and it's like, when you're not around, you put it on, and it's like, all right, you know what I mean? You kind of think. I'm sure women got their songs, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, now it's just all about, you know, just sex and drugs and alcohol and hitting this club-type music. 
let's get back to the love type music. Mm-hmm. Even in hip hop, like you had just stuff where people was kind of storytelling. Yep. And I loved it because yep. it, it took you through the whole thing. And, and it, it was almost like a book. It took you out yep. of your body and put you in their shoes. And you yep. got to, I remember go, listening to like Big Pun and shit. And I'm thinking, you know, I got that whole Bronx experience and shit. Well, he was going through this, listening to this shit. Right. You know what I mean? Jay-Z, the same thing. Brooklyn and all that. So, Mason. I don't know, man. It's still some great artists out there as far as like R.B. I don't know if you heard of Coco. I think Coco something. Oh, she's... You know um, yeah. you know who produced that record? Her number one album, right? I could tell. The ICU joint? You, know you already know. You already know. I already know. Camp. I already know. You can just, just The way he just does it, man. The dude is a monster, Yo, bro. It's camp. And I, I was thinking that today. I was like, I was listening to the show. I'm like, he had to make that joint. It's funny. Cause that's like his style. That's him. That old school. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. a badass record. Too. That joint is bad. Bro. I was listening to it in Houston in March, and I'm like, "Yo, this is the number one record in the country. I don't care what nobody." Yeah. And I was saying, I felt it. I was like, "This record is bad." Yeah. And man, he, man, that's the R&B I miss. That like I even fuck with uh, what's the shorty's name? Damn. What's the, her? Her's a beast. Yeah, I, man. I just it's some of them joints that I just fuck with. Like, yep. and maybe I need to start listening to them more. That's why I feel like even and, and male R and B is dope, but women R and B why they killing it, kicking them motherfuckers ass. You gotta go to Afrobeat to get some nice R and B type <laughs> shit now. <laughs> shit. I want good male R and B back too, man. And I don't know, man. It, it's just a certain feeling in music that's gone. And if we really could start promoting it and getting it back, man, I, I just think the world would be different. But that's just two old men talking some shit. Wait, what, what about Afrobeats, man? Um, what's your thoughts on that? And what do you think about that? That's pretty much becoming like the number one thing now, Afrobeats. You fuck with it? Yeah, I, I love do. it. Yeah, I love it. It's a fucking vibe, man. And yeah. I, I, I definitely <laughs> enjoy that. Um, I like it executed the right way. I don't think everybody should try to jump into it and right. fuck it up and tear the art up. But the ones who do it the right way, man, that's a vibe, bro. I yeah, love it. yeah. I definitely fuck with the Afrobeats. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast in the books. We definitely appreciate everybody listening in. Hey. Every Friday, 5.30 Eastern, 5.30 Eastern, we'll be live on Viral Hip Hop News and Hip Hop News Uncensored. Might even be live Thursday, depending on if we get, you know, a particular guest. But um, yeah. nevertheless, yeah, we're we going to work. We're going to work. We keep pumping up this content and um, doing what we always have done the last six years. That's your brother Sam Man, Viral Hip Hop News. I'm your brother Oh God, Hip Hop News Uncensored, together with the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Over and out.